Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Going to be giving you my match reaction from the Manchester United Newcastle United game. So Manchester United drew 0-0 with Newcastle at Old Trafford yesterday. Marcus Rashford sent an injury time header wide. That chance came from a Casemiro cross. Rashford, of course, didn't start the game, but he did come on. Uh, Rashford had big chances in the 1-0 win against Ammonia Nicosia. Uh, don't forget, not so long ago, Marcus Rashford got named Premier League Player of the Month for September. There was quite a few talking points in the game yesterday. Cristiano Ronaldo controversially had a goal ruled out. <clears throat> uh, Ronaldo sc scored his 700th club goal. In the 2-1 win against Everton at Goodison Park the other week. He came on in the first half of that game to replace Martial because Martial went off injured. Uh, Fred had a big chance in the game. <coughs> Should Manchester United have had a penalty? Because uh, Jaden Sancho got brought down in the six yard box. Newcastle, you know, they had their chances as well. Joe Linton hit the woodwork twice. Uh, should Newcastle have had. A penalty as well because Joe Linton got brought down in the six yard box. Um, Eric Tenag calls players to kill opponents after Newcastle draw. Eric Ten Hag was not happy with the result, but he did mention that he was happy with Manchester United's performance. I said prior to this game that this was going to be a tough game. You know, Newcastle are in form at the moment. Reflecting on that draw, they've extended their unbeaten run. The other week, Newcastle beat Brentford 5-1 and a few weeks ago, they beat Fulham 4-1. Let me put into the equation that Newcastle were missing players yesterday. They were missing Alexander Isaac and he's a key player. Newcastle got him from Real Sociedad. They were missing Emel Kraft. They were also missing Matt Ritchie and they was missing their first choice goalkeeper, Carl Darlow. You know, Newcastle are the richest club in the world now. Obviously, after that takeover by the Saudi Arabians. Um, obviously, before the Saudi Arabians, Mike Ashley was Newcastle United's owner and he got heavily criticised. Ashley was Newcastle's owner for around 13 years. Obviously, Eddie Howe got to give him credit. I think he has turned Newcastle around. Eddie Howe has been the Newcastle manager for almost a year. Don't forget Eddie Howe signed a long-term contract with Newcastle. 
before Newcastle he managed Bournemouth. He was at Bournemouth for a long time. He enjoyed two spells with them and at one point he had a spell with Burnley. Uh, before Eddie Howe, Newcastle had Steve Bruce. Newcastle were very inconsistent under him so they ended up sacking him. Uh, got to be honest, Newcastle were actually consistent when they had Rafa Benitez but Rafa Benitez ended up resigning from Newcastle because he wasn't getting backed enough by the board. At that time, a lot of Newcastle fans were disappointed when Rafa Benitez went. And a long time ago, they had Alan Pardew and they also sacked him. Uh, let me put into the equation that Newcastle have lost players. Uh, don't forget the loan Martin de Bravka out to Manchester United. Uh, Man United do have the option to buy de Bravka. For around £5 million at the end of the loan. He hasn't yet made one appearance for Man United. He's a backup to number one, David De Gea. Isaac Hayden departed Newcastle. Matty Lonstaff went out on loan to Colchester. At one point he was out on loan with Aberdeen. And they let Federico Fernandez go. And they also let Kieran Clark go. Manchester United won this game against Newcastle at Old Trafford last season for one. Uh, Man United were obviously missing players as well yesterday. Um, obviously, Martial is out with injury. He came off injured in the first half in the 2 1 win against Everton. Uh, there was no Harry Maguire, but he wouldn't start anyway. He's not been one of our first-choice centre-halves since the arrival of Martinez. Uh, and Juan Bissaka was missing, but again wouldn't start because there's no way back for him in the Man United team because Diego Delo is our first-choice right-back. Uh, there was no McTominay yesterday. Of course, he was suspended. Uh, Brandon Williams, he's still out with injury. He's been out of injury for a while, but he doesn't get in the team anyway. Uh, Donny van der Beek, um, obviously he's still out with a knock. So, there were the players that Man United were missing. But, you know, Man United... Only just beat Amoni Nicosia at Old Trafford 1-0. You know, we struggled in that game. And Amoni Nicosia are poor. You know, Scott McTominay scored in the 93rd minute of stoppage time. So he saved Man United from humiliation because Man United almost got embarrassed by Amoni Nicosia twice. We won away at Moni Nicosia 3-2, but we had to come from a goal down in that game. In the game at Old Trafford against the Moni Nicosia, Man United had around, what, 34 shots? And we had around 12 or 13 shots on target. You know, I give a lot a lot of credit to Moni Nicosia's goalkeeper. He made some fantastic saves. You know, he's a boyhood Manchester United fan. But uh, revert back to what I said earlier on this video against Newcastle yesterday. We had the chances, but we only had, what, like two shots on target the whole game. So Man United are just not clinical enough. And like after the win against Everton at Goodison Park, Eric Tenard called Man United players to be more clinical after Everton win. Tenard said a few different things in recent weeks. Uh, yesterday, uh, we saw Casemiro, of course, get a yellow card in the game. Ronaldo, I think, got a yellow card. Um, he was furious with Eric Ten Hag for being substituted. And Bruno Fernandes also got a yellow card in the game. Now, Manchester United... I've got two hard games coming up. We've got Tottenham at Old Trafford on Wednesday. 
and we've got Chelsea away this weekend and Man United could quite easily drop points in at least one of those games. But Eric Ten Hag, I still support him. You know, I've not once prejudged him since he became Manchester United manager. Uh, there's been games this season where I like the way Eric Ten Hag's approached them, so I've credited him for that. But there has been some games where he has got some decisions wrong. I will make that admission. But Eric Ten Hag needs time at Manchester United. You know, this is his first full season as Man United manager. He knew when he'd taken over the reins at Man United, it was going to be a massive job. And, you know, he knows he's got big expectations to exceed. His expectations this season will be to probably guide Man United to a top four finish. Um, I don't know if we're going to finish in the top four this season. Uh, it'd be great if we could win a trophy this season because we've not won a domestic trophy since 2017. Uh, Eric Ten Hag, not so long ago, got named Premier League Manager of the Month. He replaced Ralph Rangnick earlier on this year. He's Man United's fifth permanent manager since Sir Alex Ferguson. Um, Eric Ten Hag's under contract to Man United until 2025. There's an option of an additional year. Revert back to when Ten Hag was at Ajax, he did very well because he won every device titles, he won Dutch Cups and revert back to 2019, he got them to the semi-finals of the Champions League and he developed the young players well. Uh, Ten Hag has made six signings as Manchester United manager so far. He recommended Terrell Malassi in, Lisandro Martinez, Christian Eriksen, Anthony, Casemiro, Martin, Debravka. Man United have spent over £200 million this year. And a few weeks ago now, Ten Hag revealed his transfer plans for January. He said Man United will continue to hold meetings over strength in the squad. Uh, Ten Hag's going to get a transfer budget of around £70 million. Uh, Could receive £100 million if Ronaldo leaves in January. Uh, Ten Hag has let players go as well, but despite that, he's still inheriting players from other managerial eras. Uh, don't forget, Eric Ten Hag recommended Mitchell van der Gag and Steve McLaren in. Uh, they've been working alongside Ten Hag. We've got Benny McCarthy at the club, John Murtough, Richard Arnold. Earlier on this year, Sir Alex Ferguson came back to Man United in an advisory role. And the Glazers are still at Manchester United. And like I keep saying, they've been a massive problem at the club for a long, long time. And we've got to get them out. And for a while, Man United fans have been protesting against the Glazers. Not so long ago... The Glazers set a price to consider selling Man United and that was £9 million. The Glazers have owned the club since 2005. Not so long ago, Sir Jim Ratcliffe did mention that the Glazers do not want to sell Man United. Sir Jim Ratcliffe did admit that he would have bought Man United in the summer if the club had been up for sale. Sir Jim Ratcliffe is Britain's richest man. He's the chairman of Ineos. Uh, Michael Knighton, you know, has been interested in buying Man United earlier on this year. Elon Musk jokes about buying the club. Five managers have left Manchester United since Ferguson. That was obviously David Moyes, Louis van Gaal, Jose Mourinho, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And earlier on this year, Ralph Rangnick left Man United. Anyway, um, on my next video, I'll be giving you a preview for the Tottenham game. 
Old Trafford and on another video I'll be giving you my player ratings from this 0-0 draw with Newcastle. So anyway guys, everything's up there. You've dropped your comments, likes, on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very soon.